Most of your parents, grandparents, and great-grandparents, really your great-grandparents, came here in the early 1900s, 1902, 1905, 1907. My mother was the one who really had the hardest time when she was, she was born here. She was raised speaking Italian, yeah. and, and she, uh, she, yeah. she never knew English, yeah. and she told me as a kid, she used to Grandma used to send her to the store for something, yeah. and she would say to my grandmother, tell me in English what you want. Mm -hmm. Grandma said, I don't know how to tell you in English. So my mother said she used to go to the grocery store and walk up and down the aisles <laughs> trying to find what it was Grandpa, Grandma was looking for. So she, in essence, was the first one to speak English. Yeah. And um, it also probably explains why she never wanted me to learn the language. Yeah, I remember you told me that part. Yeah, she that, just, that uh, you know, you're Americans, that's it. In fact, once I said to her as a teenager, <clears throat> Mom, why did you name me Aileen, not Maria, yeah. Grace, Francis, whatever? Oh, she said, it's an English name. And I thought to myself, I was about 12, 13, what does that mean? Yeah. And what it meant was, you're not going to be Italian, you're going to be an American. And mm. that was it. I grew up in Brooklyn. And when five today, years yeah. old, the war broke out. My grandfather lived downstairs, and he was a great fan of Mussolini. Mm -hmm. And my mother was very upset with him and made him, didn't want him to talk to us about Mussolini. So I knew when I was about six, seven years old that I was Italian. Yeah. I also was aware of the fact that we were fighting with Italy yeah. in a war, a major war, which was kind of scary to a kid. Yeah. So the war years be, were between when I was five to when I was 10 years of age. So you were in school for that? Yeah, I was in school. People, I was aware I was Italian and... Would people say things? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I remember the kids used to sing, um, whistle while you work, Hitler is a jerk, Mussolini is a meanie, and the Japs are worse. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we learned that was the, uh, original yeah. contact with my Italian background. When did you first learn about your Italian background? Um, well, I don't know. I think it was always something that I had always thought about, but I'm not, remember, in like first grade, what what would I take for lunch every day? Do you remember? <laughs> I don't remember. What. Okay, mortadella. Mortadella, right? Mortadella <laughs> for lunch. <laughs> and it was just it was always something that I took. I didn't really think anything of it. It's just I loved it. Like I'd eat it plain on a sandwich, anything. And I remember my teaching assistant would come up to me and be like, "Mortadella, like." That's amazing, and I'd be like, "Yeah, it's really, like I'm in first grade. That's what my mom packs me." And she was Italian, and mm. like was so amazed that like someone else so young was eating it. But I think it was just like something. I don't. I don't know who started. Well, your problem. father was born in Argentina. Yeah, half the population is Italian exactly. there. Exactly, and mm -hmm. I remember he used to say that, like, so they're Jewish. My dad's Jewish, and. On every Sunday, they would go over to their um, the neighbor's house for Sunday um, early supper and have spaghetti and meatballs, and that was the only exposure he had. And it was just like he was an Italian, but right. that's right. like that was something that he grew up with, right. even though he wasn't right. Italian. 
I remember taking you to a restaurant once, and we, Charles and I were talking about we were going to order you pasta. You were about four or five years old. Mm -hmm. And I said, what kind of pasta should I get her? And you looked up at the waiter and said, I'll have penne, please. <laughs> and I thought, oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The youngest girl in my mother's family married the very first Irishman. Prior to that, my Uncle Joe, okay. Uncle Joe Brennan. Prior to that, intermarriage was Sicilian with Calabrese, Sicilian with Abruzzese, Sicilian with, uh, that was an intermarriage. So she married the first Irishman, and uh, she was 10 years older than I, <laughs> and very much yeah. a role model. So it was then I began to, uh, <laughs> think about marrying somebody who wasn't Italian. Besides, the Italian boys were short. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, I was tall, mm -hmm. so I was attracted to the Irishman I married. If you were Italian, Grandpa was Irish, did you feel like anything in the house was different? Like, the way you were clearly raised a different way than he was, mm -hmm. and so when you guys got together, did you feel like you had different backgrounds that kind of like clashed or anything? In Absolutely. His, his family was very distant. Mm -hmm. My family was all over me and him. <laughs> <laughs> so he was overwhelmed by, by the family, the size of the family the noise in the family <laughs> and uh, I think like the difference between you and grandpa is that like you're very Italian like being with you guys like I feel like it's like we're an Italian American family sometimes I forget that grandpa's not Italian and I think like being from so many different backgrounds and having like daddy from I guess Eastern Europe because that covers everything like Russia Poland everything but him also being an immigrant from Argentina, South America yeah. is like, and then having the Italian side, it's kind of like m having all of these identities for me is so like great in one way, but it's also like confusing. It's so confusing, and but you gotta, you must never forget that the best part of you is Italian, yes, right? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> The first time I went to Italy was in around 1975, 1976. Your mom was about 15 years old. And, um, oh, she was overwhelmed by the attention she got from the boys <laughs> in Italy. They were whistling at her, they were flirting with her. Uh, but we went, we had a wonderful time. We went to Rome. Um, Naples and Sicily. My grandfather used to tell me that everything was better in Italy. I mean, he would say things like, I would pick up a lemon or something and he'd say to me, you know, in Sicily, the lemons are bigger than grapefruits. Everything was bigger and better in Sicily. <laughs> and one day I remember looking at him as a kid, 10, 12 years old, I said, but Grandpa, if everything was so good there, why did you leave? He went, ah, and he <laughs> walked away. <laughs> you know, he, yeah. was, he was always bragging about what life was like there. I remember being in Taormina. I remember being uh, at the Greek ruins. Uh, I, I was in Palermo. It just, it was just... It was such a, a compilation of so many different cultures yeah. there and so many, you know, parts of history that uh, it was very exciting. And, and you went back to Sicily for that other trip, been, right? I've been Yeah, there. but the one where you did the whole tour of where... Yeah, where my, grand, my father was born, yeah. yeah. I was made an honorary citizen of my father's mm -hmm. little town of Villa Rosa. We went to Italy, how, four and a half years ago? Years. Well, first of all, 
I, I remember you kept saying, you're going to love it. You're going <laughs> to love it. And I remember, like, that's something that my mom says, too. Like, you're going to love it. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I'm going to love it, apparently. And, like, I love to travel. And, like, Europe is, I love Europe. And I think the experience that I had there was different in a way that I didn't really know what to expect because I knew, like, Italian-American culture is so different than mm -hmm. Italian culture. Mm -hmm. They're like two different worlds. Mm -hmm. And I don't think I went to Italy thinking what you felt like, these are my people. I think it was like more of, wow, this is like where we all came from somewhere down the line. I think it's very different. You mean to with go, the Roman culture? Or? No, just like history-wise. Uh, like okay. I, I wasn't expecting to feel the way that I did feel about it. And I think I loved it in a way that I didn't think I would love it. Like mm -hmm. it's, it was beautiful. Like, mm -hmm. oh, the culture, the history, the clothes, like everything is beautiful. And then I'm like, like this is where I'm from also. I think it has very different meanings because there's that modern meaning, there's that modern love for it mm -hmm. and appreciation for its modern culture. But then again, for the history and from mm -hmm. like that kind of connection and feeling like I'm not from there, but like my family is from mm -hmm. there. And I, I think that's very different, two different perspectives of Italy mm -hmm. now. At one point in my life, I think I got involved uh, with the, I trying to figure out how one's culture affects your personality, how it affects your way of seeing the world, how, you, how it affects your way of thinking about things. And that was when I did my internship at Jacoby Hospital. And um, I watched a family behind a two-way mirror with a doctor who was not uh, Italian. And his idea of what to do with that family was so different from my idea. Mm -hmm. he, he walked out of there and he said to us who were watching, one undifferentiated ego mass, meaning these people are all mixed together. And he said, we got to get that kid out of the house. And I'm thinking, there's no way that kid's mm -hmm. going to. And grandma has to learn to stay in her own apartment. There's no way grandma's going to stay in her own apartment. Mm -hmm. So what is he talking about? He's, he doesn't understand what an Italian family is about. So uh, at that point, I began to try to study these things myself. Yeah. That's when I did my ethnotherapy project. Mm -hmm. It was in the 1980s. And then, of course, I also found that I had no Italian friends. And I thought I would join an organization. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I went to uh, meet the newly elected Congresswoman, Geraldine Ferraro, in 1980. And I visited her in Queens and I said, are there any Italian-American organizations for women? Yeah. And she said, no, there are men's and women's organizations. The men make the speeches and the women make the coffee. She said, maybe you ought to start one. <laughs> so I thought, that's a great idea, you know? <laughs> so we, I, she invited a whole bunch of people to my apartment and that's how our organization, the National Organization of Italian American Women began. The beginning uh, was bumpy because I don't think anyone knew uh, really what this was going to be. I certainly didn't know. At that time, yeah. we were struggling with the idea of a professional life and the responsibilities as Italian-American women to the home and so yeah. on. We're talking about another century yeah. <laughs> and the life the issues that we were dealing with yeah, at that time. because now it's just like... Right. When was the first time that I went to... Oh know? God, you were six or seven yeah, years old. Yeah, I don't old. think I even remember. Six years it. old, it was you always, were a child, yeah. very, an infant. <laughs> yeah. It was always like a part of my life. And I remember even in elementary school when I was that teaching assistant that I was telling you about with the mortadella, I was like, 
my grandma, she's in this organization. I think you would like it. It's called Noyao, <laughs> and you should join it. And she was like, okay, okay. And like, I still do that. It's just like something that I grew up with. And I think it was something that I grew up with and never thought about. It was just like, I went to these luncheons. I met all my grandma's friends and it was just like so much fun. And um, I think you and mommy did like such a great job of raising me in a way that women in power wasn't like that wasn't abnormal at all the sad part about needing feminism is that it once wasn't a thing like women once didn't have any rights at all that are the same and having an organization that combines both your culture and feminism is like really like mm -hmm. this is right you know what interested me more than anything else was, uh, <clears throat> and I watched this with therapists, with psychologists, um, they always had a sense of women being uh, submissive, masochistic, uh, quiet. I didn't know women like that. Yeah. <laughs> the women in my family were powerhouses. Yeah. I mean, they were, they ran the family. My grandmother couldn't read or write in English or Italian. She couldn't, she wrote her name with an X. Mm -hmm. But that woman was in charge. I mean, everybody knew that. She and was about was four. Of her too. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. She was about four or five feet, yeah. maybe. But uh, the women were very strong. The issue, I think, for Italian-American women in those days was to translate that power that they felt at home to the outside yeah. world. I don't, I, I didn't realize that you went to Jerry, I, I don't know, I just always thought that like, like Jerry is Jerry, you guys have been friends for so long, like she was such a big part of the organization and your life. I. What did you, I didn't realize how, I never thought that you guys weren't close before that. That's so like right. not a well, concept. It was, it was an instant friendship. Yeah. And uh, it was um, an opportunity. We, I mean, we really met on the level of being two Italian American women who both had children the same, uh, her oldest child and, and Joanne are the same age. I was a month older than her, and um, we had a lot, that basic yeah. uh, knowing each other. You know, one of my friends, Donna, often said, when you meet another Italian-American woman, it's like coming into a play on the second act. You know what the first act was all about. Yeah. Well, when I met Geraldine, she was in Congress. Yeah. She had just gone, gotten elected to Congress. And four years later, who would have expected her to be nominated to run for vice president in the that United video States? From your apartment. And uh, four years later, this her life was turned upside down, and she broke a tremendous barrier for women. Yeah. In what way? What uh, you uh, by being the first woman to Did she ever a... say anything about that? It just was. No, it just was what it was. Yeah. And it was very exciting. Her world was uh, turned upside down. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, she didn't get elected. But um, she, it was a very yeah. exciting moment in history. I struggled with the language because somewhere deep inside I found out that I, there's a Sicilian dialect that I grew up with that I understand and uh, I understood but I never spoke yeah. because the adults spoke in that dialect when they didn't want us to understand. Well kids learn, <laughs> you know, they learn the language, yeah. they pick it up. And um, I, tried, I tried to learn Italian, but it was mostly book learning. Yeah. I could probably read a newspaper, 
or an article and understand the gist of it. Yeah. But uh, I never was able to converse in, in, in Italian, which sometimes makes me feel a little sad. I don't think the, uh, the, the desire was to transmit the language from one generation to another. The desire was to assimilate. Yeah. And that was my grandfather's desire, grandmother's desire, it was my mother's desire. Uh, they wanted to be Americans, and uh, the language was the first to go. They certainly weren't yeah. going to teach their kids the language. Now, you speak Spanish because your father yeah. speaks Spanish. But that was the same thing. He came here, didn't speak English at all, and he has zero accent, zero accent, because that was his one priority. Like, no one. He doesn't want anyone to know because that was such a barrier. I feel like that's the same thing, like, being an immigrant, it's just like already you have so much to deal with mm -hmm. like and I know for me like Spanish was my first language to learn other than English because my dad spoke Spoken, it that yeah. was what he spoke at home besides mm -hmm. Yiddish and that's what they offered in school and like I don't know Italian at all but obviously like I wish I had the time to learn it because that would be I so told nice you, time. you have to take a course in Italian. Somebody in this yes. family has to learn yes, to speak I know. Italian. Your true. grandmother didn't. Um. <laughs> When I think of Italy itself as a country, I don't think of food. I, when I think of Italian-American culture and our family, I think of food. food. That's <laughs> what, everything revolves around food. It's like, when are we eating? What's the appetizer? Like, that's what it is. And I think that's an interesting part about passing down culture. That's, that's the basis to culture, what foods you eat, what you remember you ate when you were little. You spend all your time, every holiday is yeah. with my brother exactly. and his yeah. family and my sister and her family. Yeah, So, and even seven fishes, I don't eat fish, but that's what it was. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't think I even realized that it was an Italian, like a Sicilian thing to do until recently, not recently, like a few years ago, but mm -hmm. that was what I grew up with. Your parents yeah. make pasta for Thanksgiving. Yeah. It's always, they always do Thanksgiving. <laughs> yeah. They always make pasta too. Yeah. I just, well, I feel like you, I, like, I always associate you with pasta and stuff. <laughs> that is a great thing to associate. What but, can I say? I, mean, I think I cook the way my mother did. My mother would feed us pasta with broccoli, pasta with cauliflower, pasta with mm -hmm. peas. Pa everything was a vegetable and pasta. Yeah. And then we'd have a little meat and a salad. And then she became more Americanized, and we would have potato and uh, uh, vegetables, and there was no pasta. Yeah. I think Italian culture and Italian American culture are different because Italian American culture is what our grandparents, what our great grandparents took from Italy and kind of like kept. It's not something, I think in our case, it was never like they came from Sicily and are always up and like, oh, this happened in Sicily, like the styles are changing, like we're gonna bring that here. I think it's like very old world in right. a way. And Italian American culture is old world and I think that's the difference between Italy and that's why I liked that's why Italy was extra special to me because it was like I'm Italian American. I have that culture part of me, but I also loved Italy for Italy. It stands to reason that the people came here, came here, what, 100, 120 years ago. And being in a strange place, it, America was a strange place to them. They held on to what they knew, what they knew which was the culture yeah. of Italy at that particular time. And their thinking and their attitudes, they passed them down from one generation mm -hmm. to another. 
while Italy was changing, they weren't. Yeah. The culture that the people brought here mm -hmm. with them when they came at the early 1900s was very different. Important. The attitudes were very different. Well, I mean, women. I mean, I remember my father uh, saying to me, no daughter of mine is going to bring disgrace to this family. Yeah. And I was like, what was I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> I happen to think, and this is my bias, that the, the values of the Italian culture are much more humane mm -hmm. than many others. And I hope that they are passed down to yeah. future generations. Our family happens to be really big, and um, I, what I was saying before, how I don't really think of like our Irish side, because we don't do that much stuff that's Irish. Like, I think of our side as like Italian and like daddy's side is all in Israel so we don't like see them that much so I feel like my family here is Italian and I think I also have the same goals and like values of Italian and Italian American mm -hmm. culture so good to keep them alive <laughs> <laughs> We all set? Okay. Yeah. Listen, every time I look at a woman in high heels, I say, I fought to get women out of high heels. Look at those women now. Why are they wearing those things? <laughs> that was what we did. <laughs>